In this video, we're going to take a look at using a high res mesh as the project mesh. So we're not going to worry about creating a low res, importing that, baking a normal, and so on. We're just going to directly use a high res mesh. I'm also going to cover using a single texture set and then showing how to take a layer stack and break that up into multiple materials using an ID map to mask the different layer groups. So let's start by creating a new project. So here I'm going to come up to the top of the UI, go to File, New, and we open the New Project Wizard. For the template, I'm going to choose the PBR Metallic Roughness. Now I need to add my mesh, so I'll click the Select button. And here I'm going to choose this container. This is going to be my high-res mesh. I'm going to leave everything else at default except for my document resolution. I'm going to go ahead and switch this to 2K. So now that I have this set up, I'll click OK to create my Painter project. So here I have my container. You'll notice that I have a single texture set. Now in this case, I forgot to name my material, but that's no problem. I can actually rename this here inside of Substance Painter. So if I just double click in this field, I can now enter a new value. If I need to revert this back to the original name, I can do that. So if I just right click here, you can see that I can choose to reset the name back. So here I'll just enter this one more time. And so here I have the name change. And like I said, we're working with the high rise mesh. If I want to take a look at my wireframe, I can come over here to my viewer settings and just enable wireframe. And so this shows my wireframe. And of course, I can change my opacity or I can change my wireframe color if I like. So here I am in a 3D program. I'd like to just kind of walk through the setup. So here I have my mesh. And this is actually using Catmull Clark sub Ds because again, I'm just thinking about working with the high res mesh. Now this particular mesh is using a single material. And here is that Lambert one that we renamed back in Substance Painter. Because all of the polygons are assigned this single material, we only get one texture set in Painter. So I'd like to again stress that the material you assign, that is what becomes the texture set when you import your mesh into Painter. Now, this is also just a single polygon part. If I were to break this up into multiple parts, I just need to make sure that each of these parts has the same material assigned. So for example, let's just say that I come down here to this base, and I'm just going to break this off. So here I'm just going to extract this. And you'll notice here that I have now two polygon parts. And both of these parts are assigned this Lambert. So even though I have two mesh parts, when I import this into Painter, Painter is going to see just a single texture set. I'm just going to undo that so that I can get my single mesh again. So here we have our single mesh. So now I'd like to talk about the UVs. So let me come over here to my UV editor. And you can see that for my UV layout, I have all of the UV shells are fitting within this 0 to 1 space. So I don't have any overlapping UVs. Now we can work with mirrored UVs, and I'll cover that in another video. Now the important aspect to understand is that I don't have any of these overlapping UVs. Now since I'm using a single material and all my UVs need to fit within this 0 to 1 space, I end up lowering my overall texel density, which means that depending on how complex or how many UV shells you have, you can end up getting a lower resolution due to the texel density. So this is where you have to kind of make that decision. Are you creating a real-time asset where you need just a single material because you want to be as optimized as possible? But then you also have the trade-off of having to pack everything into that single UV set. So that can, in the end, produce a kind of a lower quality resolution to your texture. All right, so now that we've kind of discussed this setup, I'd like to export this mesh. Now, like I said, I'm using Open Subdiv Cat McClark. So before I can work with this in Painter, I'm going to need to freeze this. So here in Maya, I'll come over here to Modify, and I'm going to just convert my Smooth Mesh Preview to Polygons. And so here you can see this is just going to create a frozen mesh with all the polygons. Then I'm going to export this as an FBX. So here I'll go to File, Export Selection, and I'm going to export this. Now, for the settings, what I'm going to use in this particular case is I'm just going to have my smoothing groups enabled. And then I can just export this mesh. We're also going to talk about baking an ID map. So I want to show you what that looks like. So let's take our single mesh here. I'm just going to hide it. And I'm going to enable here another version of this. So I just made a copy of this mesh. And so here, let's take a look. So you can see, again, in this particular case, it's all just a single mesh. It's already been frozen. And this time, I have several materials applied. So if I come over here to my hypershade, you'll see that I've just made up several materials. And I've just given each one of these materials a different color. The color of each of these materials will end up representing 
an ID that I can use inside of Painter to quickly mask using the Mask with Color Selection option. And we'll take a look at how that works in Painter. So again, I would just select this mesh. And here, I would do Export Selection. And then I'm going to export this as container underscore ID using my smoothing group, making sure that my smoothing groups are enabled. Here we are back in Painter. And now I'm going to bake my textures for this single set. So under Additional Maps, in the Texture Set Settings, I'll click the Bake Textures button. And here in the dialog, I'm going to set my output size to 2K for my textures. Now, I don't need a normal map because we're not working with a low-res mesh. We're working specifically with a high-res. So I'll just disable this guy. Now, I do want to bake my world space, ID, ambient occlusion, curvature, and position. I don't need a thickness, so I'll disable this as well. So without setting a high poly mesh in this parameter section for my high def mesh, I can now just click this bake container texture. And this will just bake the world space, AO, curvature, and position using the mesh that's loaded here in the project. However, for my ID, I want to change this color source from vertex color to material color. Then I'll come back to my common parameters. And I am going to add that ID map here as my high definition mesh. So whenever you're baking the ID map, Whatever mesh you place here for this high definition mesh, it's going to bake from those materials. And so here I'll click this button to browse here for my container underscore ID mesh. And now I have everything set up. And I'm actually just going to leave things here at default. So here I'll click the bake container textures, and Painter will run through this baking process. Here you can see that my maps have been added here to the additional maps input. If I come over to my viewer settings for the mode, I'm going to switch this to additional map. So for example, if I want to view the ambient occlusion, we can choose that. Here you can see the curvature and so on. So I'll hit just M on the keyboard again just to go back to my material mode. So now we can look at taking this single layer stack and breaking that up into multiple materials. So here I'm in my smart materials and I'm just going to grab this machinery. I'm just going to left click and drag and drop this here into my layer stack. And so here's the texture that we have. And so what I'm going to do now is mask this. So you'll notice that since I used a smart material, it's already placed here within a layer group, which allows me to easily organize this layer group as a material within this layer stack. So here I'll just right click and choose Add Mask with Color Selection. You can see that my ID map that I baked from that ID version of my mesh that I created is already assigned. I'll use Pick Color, and then I can just choose where I want to place this texture. Here, let's try pick color again, and let's place that same texture here as well. Next, we can add another material. So I'll just scroll down and just try to find something. Here, I'll try this steel dark. We'll drag and drop this guy here into our layer stack. Again, right click, add mask with color selection, pick, and then choose the ID where we would like place this material. And it's as simple as that. And so here you can see I'm using these layer groups to denote a full material. And then when I expand this, you can see all of the layers that constitute this machinery material. So I could also, if I wanted, just create like a single fill layer here. And this could be another material. So let's just uh, think of this as a material. And then this time, I'm going to come over to my materials and just choose something that I can fill the channels of this fill layer with. So here, let's try this one. And again, right click, add mask with color selection, pick color, and then just choose where I want this to go. So this way we have our single texture set where the layer stack is broken up into multiple materials based on a mask, which in my case is just this ID mask. And like I said, the way that I recommend to do this for organizational purposes, just to create a layer group here. And like I said, we'll call this a base material. And then just drag and drop your layers into that group here will remove the mask. And then I'm going to do all my masking on this main group. So mask with color selection. And then here we'll choose where we want that to go. So now we have a nice clean organization where each layer group rep represents a material. And we can also simply just right click the group and create a smart material out of this for reuse in another project. Now when we right click and go to export our textures, we will only get a single set of textures based on this texture set. So in this case, you'll see that we'll just get a set of maps for all of the channels that are enabled for this texture set. And that would be base color, rough, metal, normal, height, and missive. Again, this also is dependent on what configuration you select, which in my case, I'm showing here the default PBR metal rough. 
So that's how you can work directly with a high-res mesh here in Substance Painter. And then also we talked about the workflow of using a single texture set and then breaking that up into multiple materials using these layer groups for organization.